So another form of rescue therapy is called rectal diazepam gel. So diazepam or Valium is a medication that's used uh, to stop seizures. It can be very quickly absorbed when given rectally. So um, a number of years ago, we had this developed by a company into the product called Diastat or Diastat Acudial. So in this format, it's very easy to use, can be rapidly absorbed, and actually starts working you know, in the brain within 15 minutes. The good news is that the um, diazepam also lasts a long time in the system, so that if a person tends to have repeated seizures, it can act on to help stop those seizures over a number of hours. Now, when you get a prescription for this, it's usually prescribed for a person who tends to have cluster seizures. And by that, I mean they might have periods of seizures that, you know, if that could be recognizable that if they've had two or three seizures and that you know that they might go on to have more unless they give a medication or a therapy to stop it. Or that if their seizures are progressing from a simple partial seizure or kind of an aura to one where they impair consciousness. So the first thing you want to know about is the person who's prescribing it needs to be clear about when they want it given. Some people might have a tendency for seizures that last longer than their typical ones. So the doctor may recommend that if you have a certain kind of seizure that lasts a certain amount of time, you know, that that also be given. But the important takeaway message is, is that you have information from the prescribing provider about when to give it, how much to give, whether you give one dose or whether you give two, and if you can do a second one, how long do you wait before you give it. Now when you pick the product up from the pharmacy, you'll have a package with two prepackaged syringes. You're also going to have an instruction sheet which actually tells you the steps and your doctor or nurse can write down information of when to give it. It also will give you pictures on how to give it. These can also be found uh, right at the um, website for Diastat and we have copies also on epilepsy.com. So a few things to point out that the pharmacist needs to set the dose for each um, syringe. And so you'll see a little window here where the dose is kind of what we call dialed in or prescribed, by the, and that can be done only by the pharmacist. So when you pick it up, you check with your, your prescription, what your doctor told you, you check the window, make sure that it's the right dose. You also want to look and see, is there a color coded um, a bar here, in this case it's a green bar, that says ready. If you don't see that, you take it back to your pharmacy to make sure that the dose, the syringe, is okay to use. Also, you keep in mind that this is a one-time use medication, and you would follow the instructions on the packages of, of when, to dis, when and how to dispose it after you've used. So let's say um, uh, this is, uh, Susan's come across her child who's having a seizure. And so she's going to demonstrate for us what she would do in giving the medication. Okay. I would have checked this already, so I see the green bar. I would have my child on their side. And in this case, it would be easier if they're facing me. This is a little stiffer than my child. <laughs> and holding the diastat, I check the dose. I see the green bar. I'm good to go. I remove the cap, making sure the safety pin is in the middle and has come out in smoothly with it. I would rip open the lubrication pack that's also included with the medication. I would dip the tip in the pack, get a lot of lubricant on it. I would just pull the pants down enough just so that I have access to the, to the anus and then insert the medication very slowly. Press the plunger with a count of one, two, three. Hold the medication there for a slow count of one, two, three. Remove the syringe holding the buttocks closed. One, two, three. And then pull the clothes back into place. Okay, so it's as simple as it doing simple. that. It is simple. It is simple. And as I watched that, you kept the person's privacy pretty well. Absolutely. If the person's in a chair, can you do that as well? 
I would remove them from the chair and bring them onto the floor to do that. Again, turning them on their side towards me so that I could manipulate them. Okay. So a person that's having a seizure, um, you certainly can do it by yourself if the person's not too large. If it's, right. if it's a, a larger uh, person, you could easily call for help for someone to Absolutely. help you with that. And we've also used people as barricades, asking the onlookers to just turn their backs and be a wall around us. We've also used that strategy as well. It gives them something to do, you know, particularly Good in a point. school setting. Um, if you ask the adults in the room to just be a wall, it depends. It depends on the situation you're yeah. in, yeah. certainly at home, but it can be done by one by person. person. And if you have someone to help you, certainly use them. Yeah. Use them as necessary, whether it's for privacy reasons or to help you, because obviously this is a still doll. If it's yeah. someone convulsing, you may want them to help you hold them on their side while you mm. manipulate the syringe and okay. remove the clothing. But you don't have to remove it completely, right. as you saw. So when you use this rectal diazepam gel or diastat, because it is available in generic or in the brand, it's, it's as easy as doing that. And then you're gonna follow your typical monitoring the person after the seizure. You're gonna continue to watch and see if the seizure's subsiding. If the seizure's not subsiding over the period of time that your doctor or nurse has recommended, mm -hmm. you give the second dose if that's prescribed as the seizure is, is ending. Um, you then let the person rest. But as we talked about before, you follow the steps in watching someone during the recovery period. If you're at home, you follow the steps of what you've decided upon with your, your team about how to monitor your child. Um, people can go back to their day-to-day -day activity many times. Sometimes people are sleepy and might need to have a nap. You, if you're doing this with a child, they should talk to their school nurse to find out if there's any Absolutely. special policies. And um, sometimes, depending upon where you are, they might require that you call uh, 911 or, or call for emergency help as backup. It's not necessary unless the, the rectal diazepam gel doesn't work or the person has continued seizures. So this was an example of some of the rescue therapies or interventions that can be used now to help people who are having seizures or are having periods of increased seizures. As I mentioned a little bit ago, we also have other ones in development, and it's going to be exciting to see what comes down the road sure in the next few years. I hope you found this information. Susan, I certainly found this helpful actually seeing it as you're demonstrating it right here. I want people to take the take home message here is that seizure first aid doesn't have to be scary. There are resources, there are help available for you go to epilepsy.com, go to their Get Help section where you can read more about seizure first aid or using rescue therapies. Also use your Epilepsy Foundation affiliate. They can also give you some additional help and resources or you can have them help train school personnel or people at work or whatever setting that you're in. So remember the Epilepsy Foundation and resource and I hope this helps you in managing seizures well.